All right. Welcome, everybody, to the 2015-16 Raymond Conservation Commission year. We go from September to May, and uh, tonight we have a couple items to talk on. Not a not a large agenda, uh, but we're looking forward to having a brief meeting every uh, last. Tuesday of each month, weather permitting, from <laughs> 7 to 8 or so. And it's mostly going to be informational on some of our projects, uh, but we'll also be uh, reaching out and asking for help on conservation in the town of Raymond uh, to move some of these initiatives forward. So with that, why don't we start with uh, um, Bill's uh, progress he's made on a long um, pursued educational piece for Morgan Meadow, a, um, a kiosk that we hope to get get put in. What have you, have you made out, Bill? Uh, sure, hello, town of Raymond. Um, Bill Fraser, Raymond Conservation Commission. Um, some of you may recognize me from the last, uh, I spoke at the last, um, select board meeting just uh, a couple weeks ago um, and many many thanks to the select board for uh, approving funds to get this kiosk project going that was very very nice very sweet um, conservation commission is very grateful and um, as far as the kiosk goes, uh, we're playing beat the clock again with the weather, but this year uh, we, have, um, we have the kiosk built. Um, it's ready to go on the ground. It's been a little back and forth on exactly where it's going to go. And it was going to go in, on Raymond Town property, then Gray, now it's back to Raymond. Um, it's just a matter of uh, getting with IF&W, finalizing the exact location, and then then do the installation. A couple of post holes and a little cement. And that should take care of that. There's a few outstanding uh, items uh, for the kiosk. Plexiglass is probably the best thing to cover the mapping the mapping itself, um, talking to a butters, uh, because the trail comes very close to uh, individual landowners' properties. Um, and then there's the matter of trail clearing. Uh, trail's in pretty good shape, but there's some maintenance. Maintenance that needs to be done uh, on the far reaches of the trail. So, uh, anyone out there who wants to volunteer, let John know. Um, don't know when we'll we'll get to that. Maybe this fall. Certainly in the spring. Uh, I think that's about it. Just a matter of getting the kiosk from where it was built on a trailer. So it's and built. It's ready to stick in the ground. It's ready to go. Wow. That's, and that's and down to the uh, Morgan Meadow Trailhead and get it in the ground. Put it in the ground. Hopefully we'll get that done in October. That, that's great. Yeah. And and that needs that needs physical bodies or that's got a contract that's got a contract. We've got a contract who's ready to any volunteer help would, would be would help that. Be, yeah, because yeah. I imagine it's probably not. Some of it's made out of shake shingles, but yeah. Yeah. there's a, there's four by fours and big bolts and great neat stuff that adds to the weight yeah that's about it that's great bill um th so jack spiegel when he he bought the land in 1989 and 1100 acres of morgan meadow just for a little history and he and his his wife donated it to the town town of raymond uh, or d donated donated a significant discount from the the per, per, from the value of the property um, and allowed the, the town to uh, allowed the state to uh, acquire the property at a, at a conservation bargain price, thanks to Jack's uh, generosity, Jack and his wife. Um, 
and uh, then in that in 2005 or six, he he gave the town of Raymond twenty five thousand dollars as an endowment to support the educational uh, efforts uh, in Morgan Meadow, and the interest was to be used from that m money to do just what Bill has right. rolled forward here. Um, so all that uh, falls in line with Jack's wishes. Absolutely. Um, of the interest that's accumulated, where you we're going to we have set aside approximately a thousand dollars for this kiosk. So far, I've only spent uh, three fifty, like f four fifty or so, great. four seventy five. So great. I think we'll come in under budget. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, excellent. Well, we're glad to finally finally see that see that through. And and Jack's, I think his pledge, his gift also allowed for the principal, some of the principal to be spent from that money after a piece of time. And I think it was a it was ten or twenty years, but it was interest only for the first. Uh, First stretch, and I think we're still in that. We're in that, still in that first stretch. That's great. That's great, Bill. Let us know on a schedule. You, I would say, you just you just pick the best date, okay, and run and give us the best heads up you can, I'll and we'll try to updated. muster. Yep. Um, and when's the sun run out? When's the end of the? Someone said November first is to, is the end of daylight. Mm -hmm. Daylight savings. Well, as long as the ground's not frozen, it, we're, we'll be good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we almost we almost beat the clock last year, but missed by a couple of weeks. <clears throat> Do you think there's going to be a um, one of the things I think um, Joe Bruno had brought it up is trying to um, uh, verify the amount of activity in the people using the trail. Do we think there's going to be like a, any kind of sign-in process or a book or anything like that? Do you feel for that at this point? I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. I think it's IFNW's primary um, primary usage for the for the town of Raymond, the Raymond Conservation Commission, whoever wants to go hiking or snowshoeing or whatever through there. So it's it's a wild uh, wildlife management area first. Yeah. And everything else follows. So. Um, Scott himself even said that he's, he's snowmobiled through there. We're not going to advertise that, really. There's not, not going to be a lot of advertising of every of anything. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be the kiosk, and if you know where it is, and it's. I think it's. Uh, we did something, John, a couple years back with. Uh, does that mean futures land for now? There's a trail system that was published, and this right. is on. Yes. This is this part is of on that. It. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. trail is on that, and I think the Raymond Rattlers showed it on their trail map system. Yeah. So I don't know if that's it's, in conflict it's with the way FMW wants to. Yeah. No, they were they're good with that. Yeah, but cool. they don't want. We, we got their permission, the I think, to to animals. have the Refuge. Morgan Meadow Trail put on that. Um, it's not Map Finder, which is a main web-based thing, but right. it, it was that map that Tracy, we worked on that group, and we went right, to yeah. Casco a number of yeah. nights, they worked on yeah. that. Uh, um, we'll well come up with that name, but but uh, you're absolutely right. It's kind of a low, a low. And, and they want to keep it low key, yeah. so um, just because of the nature of it being yeah. a wildlife what's, management. What its purpose is, right. and they don't want that disturbed. So. Yeah, that's cool. It's a lot of animals in there. Yeah. So the nature of the kiosk material will probably be mostly educational on on wildlife and right. forest management yep. and um, a simple tra trail map, trail and, map, and a you are here, right. you know, in relation to and, and probably point out where the parking area is on North Raymond Road, and at some point I would think that the two could connect with the trail. Yep. I think Scott told me that there is a there's a rough trail, but you, you kind of have to know. To get out to North Raymond Road, yeah. Where it is. Yeah. And if you don't, you it's also one to Valley Road. Yeah. It's a that one's even it's rougher, but those yeah. are two good connections. Tote roads that, in there. Old and tote roads. That's good. Um, 
So that's great. That's awesome, Bill. Thank yeah. you for moving that forward. It was good, it job, was, uh, You're welcome. good to good to see progress there. Yeah, it was. It's good to get it, uh, see it, get it done. Yeah, it's year three. Take shape. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, two related items. That uh, I did talk with an abutter to the uh, property on Valley Road. He called the black back in early summer. Um, when the Valley Road subdivision project was was going forward, this was pre uh, housing crash, yeah. whatever it was seven, two thousand six, six, yeah. Um, and th that project was approved with a fifty foot corridor access from Valley Road yep. through that subdivision property. It's after the dip yep. coming from Raymond Hill, and you yep. start climbing up on the right. Um, and it, and that corridor connects <coughs> over to Morgan Meadow yep. property. Uh, without that corridor, there's this big lo lot in. Yes. But that project never went through, and right. the concern was that maybe this corridor has now drifted off into, you know, dead planning space. Uh, and um, the the neighbor there, the abutter, was going to uh, look into it and. Hopefully, just re-secure with uh, with the town and the assessor that that corridor is, is still, still a recorded uh, connection that we have between Morgan Meadow and, and Valley Road. Um, but then also over to the North Raymond Road connection, where we helped out with the 19-acre purchase five or six years ago, four or five years ago, uh, with a contribution from the Open Space Fund. Um, I went by there last spring biking or something, and I signed there, state of Maine, and uh, not not raising an issue of any problem, but the, there was, there. I didn't see any mention of the Raymond Open Space Fund supporting that purchase. And th there's a nice sign that I think lists some of the supporters that Land for Maine Futures that helped make it happen. And yep. I know Scott worked hard to, Scott Lindsay, to make that whole project happen. Yep. Um, but I, I thought that it would be nice somehow, sometime, just for the sake, for, for the Raymond, Raymond residents, people of Raymond, they contributed $15,000, I think, from the Open Space Fund to that, and, right. and a, a simple acknowledgement there. Yeah. on that sign somehow. We're not going to make a new sign or something, but maybe there's a, another little a mini kiosk or something that uh, could just go on the record out there for so that Raymond folks can see that they, they contributed to that also. So that's uh, it for Morgan Meadow. Good report, Bill. Thank you. Um, we talked about uh, segueing from Morgan Meadow into our other um, land projects, uh, but but talking first about the idea of a trail maintenance crew, a trail conservation crew in the town of Raymond uh, that w would be able to help out with um, things like keeping the trail clear in Morgan Meadow and, and hopefully in time with our Raymond Community Forest up in North Raymond. Um, I have a contact here for the Boy Scouts, and, and those those certainly are a connection that would uh, perhaps bring some trail stewards, or a, a, a perhaps could form the core of a trail conservation crew. Um, any any ideas about how we start to t start to gel? Gel that. I mean, it'd be nice to have Raymond kids involved in it, or Raymond uh, high school kids. I don't, you know, know that we need the elementary school out there, but uh, um, need some muscle. Need some 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 muscle and some uh, good teenage vigor to help clip. Well, interest. I think we interest. Need to get their interest when they're young. So, um, what are the, what are the groups that we would have to draw on? Certainly, the scouts. 
<laughs> didn't, on didn't the scouts um, do something to the Morgan Meadow? Didn't they, they list some, yes, they uh, did. They did. One? Yep, you're right. You're right, Jim. And that was um, signs. Yes, they did. For trees and uh, different types of vegetation and things of that nature. The trail Maybe it's a uh, Eagle how, Scout how project. You, or, perhaps mm -hmm. um, some of the other camps. I know Camp Bagalom has expressed an interest in doing something with the with the Raymond Community Forest good. project good. and being a participant or supporting That's good, Russ. with that. Maybe some of the other camps would be willing to do Could the same pick thing. up Morgan Meadow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and whether it's, you know, some of the, as you said, the camps from um, Panther Pond or even off of Cape. Raymond Cape, or some of those folks want to do anything. The Agawam people have certainly helped uh, um, or the, the um, watershed work. The watershed work, particularly just below the dam, mm -hmm. um, and helping there. Field foil. Yeah. And uh, there's, I can't remember the fellow's name, who has been very active in pulling the people together and been very helpful. Good. Do you? Do you listen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. So I think they would be a good group. They seem to really are. They're looking for things that mm -hmm. their kids can do. So. At some point, it, you know, it'd probably be more than just a happy outing on a, on a summer day with the camp with the campers and and mm -hmm. of a, of, to bring it to a scale that would be effective in in keeping the trail open and clear and safe. Um, yeah. it, you know, it might it might get to a um, somehow, so, you know, probably something a little more than volunteer. Maybe there's a crew leader that's a college sophomore or something that can, like the Milfoil program, have mm -hmm. a very modest crew of two or three that work largely with hand tools. Um, and uh, we have, we just don't have the infrastructure in town to, to implement something like that. Um, does the Youth Conservation Corps do the YCC do it? Any, any are they active in this area? I you know I don't know Jim and they certainly they certainly were and it was a it was a I bet they still are. There's a DEP program that that yeah. rolled that out and they actually rotated I think around communities and that's probably the best way to that might be a good model to week project for them to come in and and do their thing. Uh, they probably have some training around erosion control yes, they would. and yeah. you know where to put a path and if it, if it looks like something is occurring, redirect the water, those kind of things. Are Eagle Scouts looking for projects that we might have a list of? We might give them ideas. This for the Scouts, that's for sure, Marley. Um, something worth looking into. And well, and Brian Scout has a complicated mm. project, and if mm. we have some things on a list that we could put out that we needed to have done. Yeah. I think if you made it an all-day thing, supplied lunch and drinks. Mm -hmm. I always help. Right. That would attract a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and right off the bat, Morgan Meadow needs some clearing and, and new trail signage. Signs, yeah. Signs. I mean, just basic clearing, basic trail clearing, not, not yeah. necessarily, you know, steps and rocks and stuff, right. but... but and just working getting with trees, out of the yeah. way. trees and having good signage. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of step one. Take one bite. Right. Yeah. When we get to steps and rocks, then we'll but we'll cross that bridge. We'll cross those them. rocks when right. we get there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, any work need to be approved by my F and W? Probably should run all everything yeah. by them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or yep. if they have any contacts, um, I'm sure it's going to who they've worked with before, and maybe they would come up with the YCC or some other. Uh, I think the yeah the the template would probably be keeping it initially, anyways, to to uh, you know your, the the Spiegel Trail that's mm. local and a really a relatively yeah. small part of the 1,100 yeah. acres, yeah. but and, and that way it kind of honors the the wildlife management wilderness, if you will, of the rest right. of the place. Not that there shouldn't be trails out there, that, right. and, and there already there are, but... Yeah, there's probably game trails or, you know, whatever the animals are using it, or maybe snowmobile or tote roads or whatever. 
or do they want to be have marked versus just open wild wild right uh, <coughs> one of the thing uh, IDEX does have a community uh, outreach as well so um, they have a volunteer you give a couple days a year to nonprofit organizations I don't know if this would qualify for that but I'll follow up on that I'll ask that'd be you. great Jim yeah. get a crew from there be great All right, that's a good place right there. Um, well, were anything else on on land? Anything else on Morgan Meadow? Well, if not, I'll jump over to a, just a quick recap of where we're at with the Raymond Community Forest Project while we're on land. Um, and we had a successful uh, outreach effort this whole summer. We were we had a. Uh, Good turnout at the Fourth of July parade, uh, where fire trucks and a bunch of groups walked down through the village, and the Raymond Community Forest folks were there with their T-shirts, and we had a booth, and um, so that was uh, that was a success. That was the f that was kind of the first Danielle Loring had organized the the Fourth of July day, and uh, it was a it was a great turnout. We had. Um, some good interest uh, on the forest, um, and we had our uh, jazz jazz fundraiser in August uh, down at the farm, and and that was a great turnout. Had about 120 people, I think, and um, raised about $4,500 that mm -hmm. afternoon for the forest project. Some great interest. Uh, the weather awesome. cleared forest. Um, so we, we still have a gap to uh, fill. We're hoping to um, negotiate with Hancock about um, getting uh, a little more time on our timeline from, from the original agreement, which is through December 31st, 2015. And uh, part of that is, is related to uh, the Land for Man Futures money that is uh, allotted for this project, $150,000, and that money hasn't been uh, released yet from uh, the state planning office, um, and we hope to have more information this fall on w when that money might be forthcoming. But even assuming that comes, and, and hopefully it will come, uh, we still have about $55,000 to go to close the gap for the 350 acre project of the Raymond Community Forest. So there'll be more on that through the uh, fall and all year as we hopefully come down the home stretch of that fundraising effort. It's been a lot of good support and look forward to, to uh, bringing that project to completion. There'll be some trail building opportunities there for sure. Um, So anything else on, uh, that's probably it for land items. Ben, do you want to give us a uh, two or three or minute overview on waterway stuff? Just to, because I'm, I'm not sure folks yeah. don't, that aren't, right, aren't in one of the lake groups get the update on, on um, Ramey waterways and, and things invasive and uh, what some of the hot buttons items well, are. Well, I've been a little bit removed from it this year yeah, yeah. for personal re reasons, but yeah. um, the first thing that comes to mind is that um, whether it's because of the cold weather or not, uh, there has been some marked uh, successes in reducing the amount of milfoil presence in certain areas. Huh? Turtle Cove comes to mind. Um, and um, that's a, a good success, and, and there's been some others as well. Um, and there is, and I just haven't been involved enough, but there is a concerted effort now, and I um, to where VLMP is becoming involved with trying to get the rest of Sebago Lake. Uh, there's a group that's, that's formed, and I've forgotten the name of it now, uh, trying to get the rest of Sebago Lake involved in the milfoil effort that's beyond the Raymond effort for us. Um, 
there's a lot of milfoil, as people know, there's a lot of milfoil as you are at Raymond Beach as the boats are coming out because uh, it's around. Um, there's been some, I think, some pretty good success. Uh, oh, um, at uh, help me with the uh, uh, Panther Run. Not Panther Run, but no, the the marina that's changed Jordan its name, Jordan Bay. the Jordan Bay. Yeah. That um, Dave Martin's Port apparently Port. said that uh, this is the cleanest it's ever been. We've been working there for a lot of years. You probably re remember back probably way back when, yeah. when <laughs> tarps we, all we had was tarps and divers and we've been at that for a long time because they've been very helpful they they give us space and um, a boat and uh, they they lift off uh, the um, these big metal bags of, of off of the boat and then so that when the town comes by they can be the milfoil is dumped into the so the, uh, the harvester was running this past summer We've had some a little bit of trouble with it um, with boats because we have two of them. Now. Two har two harvesters, but yeah. but some operation this summer of those. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we did have some. We uh, one of the things that we're trying to sort out in our WPA is 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 going out to the community and saying, for example, we need a new motor uh, or we need a new this. Being very very specific. And seeing if that is a way, uh, another way of getting monies to come in, yeah, because it's for a very specific yeah. item. Yeah, uh, we've had, and all of them. If you talk to people um, around the the state, Same maintenance thing. is a is right. a big issue. Uh, and uh, but uh, what is, I think, what everyone is anxious about is um, if we have a mild winter one of these days. Will the milfoil suddenly sprout up again, or um, be, because there has been a, a noticeable? Um, it was a light milfoil year. Yeah, if the last al almost the last two, but it really was no noticeable this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when we've had the people go out, it's been an issue of um, not huge patches, but little pieces here. Isolated. And yeah, and so um, we still have. There's a lot of work to to still be done. Uh, on the Jordan River itself, they're work, working hard, in particular up in Bayview. There's some real issues up there that have to be dealt with, and tr trying to sort out the whole issue of public versus private. Yep. You know, those are issues, uh, and um, I think uh, certainly RWPA, I think, is going to be working uh, up on the, the the Bayview area. Good. Um, and also, um, there's, I think, we're beginning and. This, this whole idea now of trying to pull together an organization that can deal with the parts of Sabago that are outside yep. of Raymond itself. Uh, and that's just begun. They've, uh, I haven't followed it too closely. I hope to be doing more of that this coming year, but um, Presumably. I see some very um, positive signs. Uh, but it still takes money. I mean, yep. the, the bottom line, is you need to have the money to be able to, to pay the kids, uh, not just kids, uh, and we, you know, we aren't paying a lot of money. It's about ten bucks an hour. But you still got inspectors on at Crescent. I saw them often through the. Oh, summer we have the courtesy boat inspectors, sure, covered. and uh, people that go up and down Mill Street on occasion see me waving all the time, uh, and I don't apologize for it. I just want you to know that we're there. Uh, and we put up new signs now that not only have the the sign for the, the courtesy boat inspectors, but it now says RWPA on the top and all right. of that. And so I'd, I'd heard from the from the dam down to the power lines, they've cleaned out, they cleared that of milfoil. Um, I don't know if it's that far. Uh, what has been we've been very pleased about is that probably seven years ago now or, or so. We started from where you, just on the other side of the dam where it hangs the left. Take, take the corner. Yep. Yeah, and it goes a long ways. We did a lot of clearing there and it hasn't come back. Uh, the, what they're doing now and one where Agawam got involved, um, thanks, uh, the, uh, the Jensen's have really been very active in this part of taking care of um, either Panther Run or, Jordan, or the Upper Jordan River, whichever you want to call it. 
Um, there, there are places where you really need divers. Um, one year, the, the one year where we really started um, dealing with this is we we're saying seven years ago or so, uh, we were able to get um, the, um, Steve Tremblay, who handles the, uh, the, the dam. Okay. We were able to get them, the fisheries people. Plug the uh, dam. To close the dam. Yeah. And it was amazing how quickly it got shallow. And we were able to literally sort really? of sit <laughs> in the mud and, and pull the milfoil. And, um, but there are other parts that are deep, and so you need a diver. Need a diver. And, uh, there's always the issue of um, DEP says that, and um, the LMP and L LEA all say that you shouldn't keep your, uh, your mats down longer than 60 days or so. And there's a reason for it. If, <laughs> if you leave it down for two or three years, there could be this much sand on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've learned a lot. And so, th th and thanks to the Jensen's and others in the Jordan River part, um, we're moving them more often. We're getting strong bodies, and you need, that's when you need the Agawam people uh, to, to help uh, move these. Uh, and we're using smaller ones now. You know, when, yeah. when we first started, we were using, you know, they could be 20 feet long and however wide. Mm -hmm. And I can remember rolling them up and yeah, putting yeah. them on the back of the, yeah. uh, a punt or something and taking it out. And, and, and you've got the, uh, what do we call the, the bars, the, the re rebars. Oh, yeah. So that makes it very to heavy weight to yeah. weight them down. Yeah. Uh, and we're now, uh, LEA right now is experimenting with burlap. Uh, with the idea <coughs> that you put it That's down something. and it will take it right. kill, right. but it will eventually just go away. Oh, so right. And they're experimenting. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. still experimenting. So, Where uh, does cold weather have the effect? It apparently stunts them. Um, and I don't know, I, I'm not a, a, a biologist. All we know is that um, over the past two years, there has been, a, it, there appears to be a significant reduction, uh, mm -hmm. and and, um, and it's not just from us. Obviously, Harvesting. our pulling it has made a big difference. Yeah. But there seems to, to be a weather effect that either stunts how long it takes them to recoup, mm -hmm. and so if you're getting the same amount, amount of sun, but you've really stunted them, they don't have a chance to to grow as quickly. I guess mm -hmm. uh, I, I, that's that's, a, that's, that's the, part of the game now. Yeah. Is we're trying to learn. That's one thing that everybody needs to understand is that we really have been doing this only since about 2009 when we really started getting serious about the harvesters and all of that. That's when the monies became available from the Clean Water. I don't know if it's the Clean Water Act or not. It came out of the U.S. government uh, and we stepped up RWPA did. Built the first harvester. Built the first, har first harvester. harvester. And, not, and that started happening around the state. Yep. And things have changed and people have learned. And that's one of the things you have to, I, I would hope everybody uh, will sit back and they'll say, there's been some discussion of, oh, there are a lot of fragments. Well, there may have been some fragments, but we've learned. And, and we're moving forward. Sounds like, it sounds like, sounds like some slow, but possibly steady progress yeah. uh, yes and, uh, it's, um, and the the thing the courtesy boat inspecting uh, the all the boaters most of the I, I say 99.9 percent .9 of the boaters today know what's going on they understand it right. and they're willing to let you walk around with them check to look, look at their boat and check things and and they're all concerned uh, every you know you still have a few uh, who are, you know, say things like, you know, I'm spending fifteen hundred dollars a week for this, and, and yeah. I can't spend five minutes on right. checking my boat. But, but that's going by by the the board mostly. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm I'm pleased. Sounds uh, like and, good progress. Uh, it's we will never ever get rid of no foil. Right. But what we can do is that we can get it contained. And one, one, uh, just one last thing. For me, one of the most important things is not necessarily pulling the milfoil. You have to do that because you've got it. 
but it's what the volunteers do in July and August when they go out in their boats and their whatever we call these things, you look into the water, and going around <clears throat> and checking to see if there are any new infestations. And what they've done uh, for, I think, almost, I think all the ponds now in Raymond and is being done elsewhere is that we're dividing the lakes uh, into sections and people take responsibility and, and are assigned section one, section two, so, so forth, all the way around the lake. Uh, and that's where you, you can catch it. Uh, and that's where if you catch something, the state does have the ability, DEP has the ability to come right. in, right. as we response. saw what they did with the hydrilla, I right. think. Right, um, Years ago, yeah. Uh, they, they can come in and just, <coughs> they then will just rip it all out. Yep. Uh, and that's the way you want to be able to do it. Yeah, more proactive yeah. approach. Uh, so, in other words, you stop it and you, uh, instead of having to go in. Be, because a lot of our experience has been, for example, at Port Harbor, uh, at Jordan Bay, was you just had huge mats of the stuff. It was thick. And now it's, you're getting it down to, uh, uh, yes. Because what you have to un understand, and I will be quiet after this, John, you shouldn't have got me going. Um, <laughs> we want to hear it, man. Um, is that, you know, you, if you have a lot of, of milfoil and you've got your divers and they're pull, pulling it and they're using bags or they're using the har harvester, that it gets muddy. And so you sort of have mm. to move on. And the big thing that we've learned is that you not only have to move on, you then have to come back maybe a couple of times during the season to the same places and revisit them again. <clears throat> and that that's the trick is being able to come back at least a couple more times and then knowing full well that you've got to come back the next year. But the assumption is, or the practice and experience is, that it, yes, you will have some, but it'll be less. Less and less. And the idea is that the hope, and I think some of the experience is that after five, seven years, you then have got it controlled. Yeah. But it takes the money and it takes the staff. And one, one of the hard things is we're using a lot of college kids, and they have to go back to school. And so that sort of curtailed that then. Um, it, shorts it, it shortens the season. Yeah. Uh, and it would be nice if we could find uh, some retired folk uh, that would find it interesting. Uh, have, you have you requested that? Because I think it might be very interesting. Well, that's one of the issues. There, there are a couple of issues that we are not totally skilled with. All the organizations dealing with milfoil, I think now know how to do it, okay? And they know the various techniques and they're experimenting. What probably aren't experienced enough, except for a couple of instances, is how to um, get the message out to, to the public in a way that gets you the money that, that you need. Do you guys have the dough to hire after the college kiddos are gone? Do you, is, there, is there budget to go another month with local retired folks or mm -hmm. folks that um, We would have to talk with the tre We'd treasurer have to talk on with that. The treasurer, yeah. um, but it is a problem. Yeah. Um, right. Having the, the funds, uh, we tried to go with a full executive d director full time a few years ago. That unfortunately didn't work and that strapped us and yep. so we had to go into a sort of a uh, re-gearing and we we've done that um and but still money is the one yeah, issue yeah. Um, because we do know how to do it now but we we don't have the skills of um experience within the group and i th and i'm not just speaking of rwpa i think i'm speaking in general uh to get the business community to buy into right. uh, this to give us enough money, uh, and, but we still do get. I mean, the public comes in. We get you. You get, we get your money. annual appeal, and, yeah. and the I state, mean, the, the state, the sticker money is still providing. Some oh yeah, the, that's the for the, the courtesy boat inspection right. and stuff. Right. Um, and and of course, the town has been and so town is supporting so, so sure. supportive over right. all the years, and have actually uh, it's increased a bit. 
uh, I mean, we we get that's good seventeen five. That's great. That's great. Well, that's a great summary, Ben. But we need about probably sixty to seventy thousand. Yeah. <laughs> to really, to really if you really want wanted to knock do it, it down, uh, that's what you would. Uh, that's what it would. A long reach for any town. But, but we've been able to develop uh, to use a um, a project manager as opposed to a an executive director. Good. Uh, and he has been excellent. Good way to go. Uh, and it looks like Panther Pond may get another 319 grant. That's hopefully in the works. It'll be the third one. Third grant. That's yeah. Good. So that's not excellent. Uh, one of those grants. Uh, that's for um, dealing with the whole phosphorus, the run, uh, runoff issue, and helping. Um, that's Clean Water Act money. That's a clean, that, that's yeah. clean water act money. Yeah. It is a different. That's for erosion runoff. Erosion control. But one, runoff, one of the yeah. things that we might be able to do is then take advantage of that person and have that person sort of doing a little bit a little of A little bit of milfoil time when yeah. it's slow. So. Yeah, sure. Great. Excellent, Ben. Appreciate so I, the I info. And we'll. Um, We'll look forward to any big updates you have to bring through the year um, on funding in particular, state yeah. state and otherwise, for RWPA, which seems to be leading the effort still for milfoil. Um, well, I think just the last item here, because it's we're overdue, uh, we're, we're hitting our one-hour target um, tonight. We start a little late, um, but I did want to end by 8.30. I, I just wanted to plant a seed for a, uh, a hazardous waste collection day. I, I hadn't seen any info on that in the town of Raymond for a number of years. I, I was, uh, where was it? I was, I was walking through town and you know, it was outside of Portland um, and they were having a, having a collection day. I remember we used to have them and I know that Wyndham has done something with it, but um, um, I'm hoping that maybe next month we could learn a little bring by next month we could bring a little info back to see where the local ones are and and uh, if we are up to trying to organize for one maybe in the spring or something does the casco um transfer station have they they don't have regular has collection there but yeah. that might be a venue where it would it would be well served for someone like Clean Harvest to come and set up. I mean, I think they do it at the fire station. It's oh, okay. it's a pretty clean operation. It's centralized here. Okay. And and having it local right here in town yeah, would be even better. Local. The recycling committee you organized that the last time. Uh, probably had some involvement. I'm I'm not sure the recycling committee is uh, back up and is active. is real I think active. Phil is Back on is he back on it? Right. So. Okay. He'd be the one. To, he'd be the one to check with. Um, I'll I'll uh, try to take a poke around and see what's involved in in getting one of those organized, or at least where where they're happening. I know that DEP supports them with some limited funding. I think and. Uh, so that's it. That's all we got for tonight, unless anyone else has something to add. If not, we'll um, break till uh, the last Tuesday in October, which is, um, what's the number on that one? Does someone have a? The last Tuesday is October 27th. Let's shoot for seven o'clock. And uh, we'll see everybody then. Great. If we hold it in Nashville.